So today I want to talk all about color analysis, and this is something that's been very popular on the internet. If you've never heard of these six dominant characteristics, it is a step further after you determine your one of 12 options. So I haven't been professionally typed or analyzed, but I ended up landing on Deep Winter for myself, and I think it works, but there are a couple things that just didn't feel right. And until I started to curate this makeup collection that I now have, that I keep staring at, it all started to make sense when I landed on these six dominant characteristics. And for reference, those are dark and light, warm and cool, and soft and clear. So if you are also thinking that you're soft, this video is for you because I have some makeup recommendations kind of things you might want to look out for that help me realize and accept that I am soft because there is a whole array of colors that I didn't realize I could explore until I came to the soft palette. So as you can see, my look today is, is quite soft, I'd say. I go for a more ethereal watercolor look and that is also a part of the soft summer recommendations. And also with ethereal, nothing is very clear cut. It's very blended. And if you are confused as to why I'm saying ethereal, I mean the essence system. So yeah, I use that as well. I use everything. My journey started with Kibi and then the essences and then to color. So I'm very happy that everyone's talking about it now. So going back to the deep winter color palette, it is still deep, but there is a touch of gray added. I have one gray sweatshirt. That color just makes me feel good about my skin. And now it makes sense. I'm about to start getting a bunch of gray things, but not really, I have to control myself. With that being said, I wanna go into the makeup. When it comes to lips, there isn't exactly a full-on color with lip liner ever going on on my lips because I feel like it's too harsh and it just makes every all the attention go to my mouth, which is not exactly, I don't know, I feel like there's no balance. And that is why this stuff matters is because if you take a very light person and they put on a very dark lipstick, it's making a statement. It's really all about that lipstick. People aren't seeing the person first, they're seeing the lipstick first. And so that's why harmony is a big topic when it comes to color. And that is why I love it. I just, I love puzzle pieces. I love finding connections. And so that's why I'm talking to you guys about it. So let's get into some lip products and colors particularly that I'm very happy that I found. And hopefully if you have maybe a, a purpley soft lip, then hopefully this helps you because that is what I have. So the first product is not exactly my favorite, but it's more about the color. So this is the Sugar Lip Balm in the color Peony. And I actually avoided this color for a long time because I thought that it was just weird. <laughs> I don't know why but now it is my go-to. So this is Peony and it looks like my lips, but better. It's not the most nourishing, so that's why it's not my favorite. This formula in general just is not my favorite. This is Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk 2 and it is dark, but I do not put it on full on. I like to dab my lipsticks. I haven't worn full on color in quite a while because it's just a lot and I like a very watercolor eye. So it's still a good color, but it's the application that also matters. This next shade is also Charlotte Tilbury, but this is more about the color, like I said, not the formula. <laughs> so this is Walk of Shame. It looks more orangey on camera. I don't know why. This is it right here, but this is a very good red for me because it is muted. It's a very rosy color, like a rosy pink, but darker, but the pigment is not so intense that it goes on. It's very obvious that you're wearing a dark shade. And I'm very happy that I chose that color for my wedding day because it was just the right amount of like glam, but not so much. The shade I have on right now is a drugstore shade. This is the Milani Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain in the color Mauve Mentality. 
and I love that the color is on here. So this is very glossy. It leaves a very nice stain when it fades off. I can put this on super light and it looks so beautiful. So going into a red, I have two shades that I really like. Now this one I have not been wearing full on. Um, this I was very into a dark aesthetic for a bit there. And this is the NYX Smooth Whip in the color Chocolate Mousse. And this I also do not wear full on. I basically put it on and then rub it. As you can see, it is very similar to this, but it's a bit darker, but keeping that soft barrier around the lips is key to making it look like it's not too intense, but it's still intense, I'm not gonna lie. That is a color that I wear, and I'm really going for that vampire look. So, that's just another side of me. <laughs> but if you want a red, I suggest doing a lip oil. This one came in a little Sephora Favorites kit. It's by Clarins, and I think just any red lip oil. This is very raspberry shade. You can see there it is doing something kind of funny with my hair, um, but it's not intense. The one thing about the Soft Summer palette is that it is next to Soft Autumn, which means that you can kind of borrow some shades, and I love that. I love the whole borrowing of shades, depending obviously on the shade. And this color that I've loved for years that I've started using again, it just makes sense why it looks good on me, why I love it. And this is the shade Taupe by MAC. It is a brown, it's a little warm. To be honest, it's kind of neutral, but I see a bit more warmth in there. And this is the brownest I'd say I would go. I did, however, get this color from Milani last month because I wanted to see if I could find a dupe for it, but it's not quite because it's dark. But I will say this is a good example of a soft lip color. It actually looks a lot like um, Pillow Talk right over here, but a bit warmer. So it's really finding those shades that are muted and not full on pigment. I have an example of something that I thought I would like, but turns out it is, it is not for me. And you'll see right from the swatch. It is so bright. It is also one of those Milani colors. It's just too much for me. I feel kind of weird when I wear it. Like I'm trying to be someone that I'm not. And that is because of my eyes particularly. And my eyes have a lot of birthmarks. There are little brown dots. There's like a purple patch. They're not clear. So that means that I am more on the soft side. And that is when things start to make sense. Don't look at your teeth. Try your eyes. Now that we have lip colors out of the way, I want to get into palettes, and this is where my heart truly lies because I love doing eyeshadow. And since I've expanded my eyeshadow collection this year, I've gotten a couple things. I am very happy with where it's at. I feel really content with the colors that I have, and even looking back at palettes that I've owned and had to declutter or, you know, they expire. Um, it all makes sense. All of my palettes are in the soft summer color season and it all makes sense. I don't really do dark eyes because I don't know, I don't really go out like that and I feel like it is a lot, but I do have darker shades in these palettes. So for a drugstore, some more affordable options, I have two from ColourPop. I don't even know if they still make these. So the 1111 palette is a neutral palette. So here it is up close. And as you can see, there's only one shade that is leaning warm, and it's this gold. This color in particular is a color that looks a bit white on me, but I always look for shades and palettes that have this tone, this pink muted tone, because it is the perfect transition shade in my crease. So that's why I picked this up, but I think for someone lighter than me, it would be fine. For my specific purposes, it doesn't really cut it, so I don't use this one that much but I do like it, particularly for the darker matte shades. The other palette I have from ColourPop is the Truly Madly Deeply, and I love this palette, it's so beautiful. It has these pressed glitters in it that just remind me of fish scales, mermaid scales, whatever you want to call them, and it has these muted purples, muted browns. Again, this toned down pink, this toned down peach orange shade, and a skin tone color. 
So all of these colors are muted and soft and cool, except for this one. Maybe this one too. Now we have the big palette, which I decided to get because of traveling, plus I really wanted to try Miss Natasha Denona's products. And so I got the, what is it called? Hyper? Yes. <laughs> it looks weird. It just looks weird. <laughs> Ignore me. The Hyper Natural Face Palette. So this palette has all shimmers. It has bronzer, it has blush. This blush is kind of bright, but I make it work. And the shadows are all like either satin. There's one really pretty topper color, dreamy. You can see the smokiness of those darker colors. There's just a bit of gray added to that brown. And obviously this is quite gray. And this actually reminds me kind of of Half Baked by Urban Decay. And this is a nice, beautiful, natural, or not natural, champagne. Not too yellow, not too silver, just perfect. And last but not least, my Pride and Joy, also by Natasha Denona. This is the mini Starlet palette. I don't even know what the original big Starlet palette looks like, but this one is just perfect. This looks more accurate to what it looks like. So I wanna show you the difference between a soft palette and a not soft palette. So as you can see, this one has a lot of punchy colors. This one does not. This one has shades that jump out at you, that red, that purple, and this one does not. It's just a very washed, washed look. So when I hold this up, it kind of just looks good, it blends. And then when I hold this up, it's very intense. With all that being said, I do want to mention that I know that my makeup style has changed, wild trends change, we had the clean girl makeup going for a bit, and that definitely catapulted me into being more simpler with my makeup and not feeling like I had to do so much with my makeup looks or I could do a lot in a different way, as in adding more glitter. Just glitter makes the world go round for me. I, I love it so much and I don't think that it's too much. For me, makeup that's a lot is more of a cut crease, a halo eye, winged eyeliner. I don't wear winged eyeliner anymore. I think I did it once and it was for a special occasion and it felt like a lot. There is, however, a new eyeliner coming out. It's by NYX and it's like the nude range. So you could do reverse eyeliner. I wanna do that really bad, but we're not talking about that right now. I'm just here to talk about the fact that trends definitely influence the way you like to wear your makeup. And until a trend comes along that you may want to try or follow, you may not discover what is more flattering on you or what colors are flattering on you. And say you're just getting into makeup and you're really excited about getting all these palettes, which by the way is a lot of money. So it's, you know, a part of the journey and don't feel super guilty or weird about wearing a bunch of shades that, you know, you're gonna look back on and kind of question your choices because that is what I did. And I look back on my 20s when I had a lot of fun with makeup and that's what it was, it was fun. And now that I have the puzzle pieces together, I can just make better, more informed choices with what makeup I decide to bring into my collection or I can be intentional with wanting to try something, which was this. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you think you are between a deep winter, a soft summer, just take it easy, borrow from both. I had fun just sharing some products that I really love. So I encourage you to look at your makeup and see the similarities and the tones and the level of clarity items have, like your lip color, your blush, see what you keep going to and what you keep decluttering. That is also a good indication of what you like on yourself and definitely look back on pictures of yourself. That is what I did. I just went back into my camera roll and favorited a bunch just to see what I thought made sense and what I was doing and congratulating myself on knowing what colors flattered me more. We all have our very experimental phases when it comes to makeup and I'm still there sometimes and then I realize maybe not, maybe now is not the time.